On my last episode, Shinji was absorbed by the mysterious Leliel, mainly because he failed to be unconditionally supported by an overprotective Misato, who has been praising him for every single improvement in his development, and defended him for every mistake he has made. Because of this, Misato lost not only her battle against the angel, but also the control for the operation. Now she will have to deal with the consequences. In the meantime, Shinji confronts Leliel and himself, and we get to see how he perceives Misato. Even though she's not his mother, he feels that she's still the mother-like figure he never had. After Shinji found himself out of Leliel, Misato decides to turn to Kaji to seek answers that she's not getting from Nerve. Kaji found in Misato a valuable ally for his mission. Finally, an Asuka that is feeling out of place discovers who the next pilot for EVA 3 will be. In this video, we will start from episode 18, where Misato struggles to communicate with Shinji and its consequences. This is Misato Overexplained Part 6. Episode 18 starts with a crucified Eva Uni 3 being translated to Japan. This is a clear reference to the symbolism of number 3 in Christianity, three beings within one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Misato's place, Asuka left early to avoid talking to Shinji and Misato after she discovered who the new pilot will be, leaving Misato and Shinji alone, which means that this will be a perfect time to talk to Shinji about it. As for right now, Shinji seems to be the only one who doesn't know that Toji is the chosen one. This scene is very important, not only for Shinji and Misato's relationship, but also for Asuka. At this point of the story, Asuka feels out of place. Even though that in the past she tried to get closer to Shinji, but it seems that every time she takes a step on that direction, Misato gets in the way. Unintentionally, but she still does it. Here, Misato has the opportunity to talk to Shinji seriously, for the first time since he was rescued from Leliel. She can talk to him about how she felt and how important he has become to her. She can tell him about how Asuka is going through some natural changes and needs his support more than ever. Or, I don't know, perhaps she can tell him that his best friend is the new pilot. But she doesn't do it. Instead, Misato tells Shinji that he will understand a woman's feeling. And with that cheap excuse, she justifies her poor communication abilities. What would have happened if Shinji would have been treated as an adult at this point of the story? This scene right here will define Shinji's behavior all the way to the end of Evangelion. Most of those events could have been avoided if Misato wouldn't have been so afraid of her own feelings. The only time in this scene that Misato is honest with Shinji is when he asks her about the explosion of Unit 4 in the United States. She tells him what she knows, but again avoids talking about Toji. Instead, she says that she will be off to Matsushiro for the testing and that Kaji will be their nanny for the next few days. This shot is fascinating. This camera angle serves to create discomfort to the viewer. It's an unusual angle, but that is the point. Misato has her arm crossed, which usually means a different stance on communication. We don't let others to reach us, basically. But also, she's above Shinji, not only by her natural high, but also on the step on the floor. Even Pen Pen judges Misato at this point. I like to think that Pen Pen here represents the viewer, as we are waiting for her to make the right thing. And it seems she's about to do it, but before that, Kensuke interrupts the moment and asks Misato for that precious new position as EVA 3 pilot. This is Shinji's other best friend, which leaves Misato speechless due to the absurdity of the situation. Then Misato tells Ritsuko that she is afraid to tell Shinji the whole truth because she doesn't know how he will react, based mainly in the fragility of his character. At this point, Misato doesn't know how to treat Shinji anymore, as when she overprotected him, he almost ended dead by Leliel. She feels she's on a gray area here. She knows she's not his mother, 
but understands that she took responsibility over his formation. Misato did not understand back then how difficult it was going to be. How could she? She was never mother-like material, she is obsessed with sex, and never overcame her father's death. Suddenly, she was in charge of a 14 years old boy that has the ability to control the most powerful weapon in history. Across the story, the three main characters are portrayed as children with parental issues, but also Misato was entitled with a substitute mother role for Shinji, a role which she feels she is failing at miserably, but somehow everything will work out at the end. Notice the amount of telephone cables across the episode. As I said in my previous videos, this is symbolism for lack of communication in Neon Genesis Evangelion, and the lack of communication in this particular episode is absurd. No one talks to Shinji about Toji. Asuka lies to him, telling him she doesn't know. Kaji doesn't mention it, although they slept on the same room together. The same old Toji could have told him, right? Well, no. Even Rei knows about it. But well, it's Rei, so... And to be fair, the only one that has this responsibility is Misato, as she is the one in charge. I am going to make a brief comment here on Asuka, as she is with Shinji in this scene, and it seems she is about to tell him when Shinji asks her if she knew who the pilot will be. Asuka lies to him and tells him she doesn't know. Now, here Asuka's reaction is very different from previous interactions with Shinji. Even though she lies to him, she doesn't overreact, she doesn't insult him or scream, she simply says she doesn't know. Asuka's face shows surprise, and immediately tries to avoid talking or looking to Shinji's face. She knows that what Misato has done is wrong. Asuka knows how important this is to Shinji, and doesn't want to be responsible for hurting him. She then tells Tukaji that she wants to smile, but she can't. On this scene, both Shinji and Kaji are facing away from each other. Again, a position that reflects lack of communication. Shinji wants to know more about his father, after all, he's piloting for him because he has this idea that by doing so, will eventually bring them together. Kaji just starts talking philosophically with a smile in his face, until Shinji mentions Misato's name. His face suddenly changes, and he gives basically the same answer that Misato gave Shinji early in the episode. Women are just hard to understand. Then back to Misato and Ritsuko, we can see their reaction as Misato says that with four Evas, Nerf could destroy the world. Ritsuko quickly changes the topic, perhaps because that is the end game for Nerf, and asks her if she talked to Shinji about Toji, and Misato replies that she will after the test, something that she should have done days ago. She's just pushing it and pushing it, kind of waiting for something to happen that would prevent that day to come. Unit 3 is possessed by the Angel Bardiel, and causes an explosion that destroys the facility. Shinji's first reaction is to ask about Misato, and gets worried not only on her well-being, but also on who should command the operation. To his surprise, it's going to be Gendo. For the first time in the story, Misato won't let Shinji, but his father. The story goes as we know it, Bardiel takes down Unit 0 and 2, Shinji refused to fight it, Gendo starts the dummy plug, Eva 1 destroys Bordiel, and the Eva's entry plug. After that, Misato wakes up, injured. She survives and Kaji is with her. She asks about Risko, who is in better shape than she is. Even with their differences, they are still friends, and she's worried. And then, when Kaji tells her about the fate of Unit 3 and the role of Unit 1 in it, her world crumbles. She knows she will now have to assume the responsibility she avoided so far and immediately calls Shinji. Shinji is relieved that Misato is alive, while struggling with what his father has done with his hands. Now Misato is over the phone, communications remember? He's trying to tell Shinji who Eva 3 pilot is, but before she can, Shinji sees with his own eyes. Misato never told Shinji, and nothing will be the same. And thus, this crucial episode ends.
Episode 19 starts with Shinji out of his mind. No one can reason with him. Misato is not there, Rei and Asuka are still in the hospital, and he is angry AF. He feels everyone has betrayed him, especially his father. All of this happened because of lack of communication, not only from Misato, but from everyone. Shinji is forced out of Unit 1, and then we jump to Misato and Ritsuko, both with bandages, not before a shot to telephone cables. Again, we are shown how Shinji was taken out from Unit 1, with hazmat suits? Why? He's not infected or contaminated. Perhaps this is a representation on how he is being treated, differently from anyone else. Misato feels that this time Shinji might not be able to overcome it. Then we jump to this scene with Rei and Asuka. This has barely nothing to do with Misato, but a lot with Asuka, Shinji, and Rei. Notice how every single camera angle focuses on the girls' bodies. This has a purpose, and that is that these girls are turning into women with mature thoughts and feelings. Rei asks about Shinji, and Asuka gives a brief overview on his situation. In my opinion, it is clear that Rei hasn't visited Shinji yet. But Asuka has, even if he's unconscious, she worries about him. Then Shinji decides to leave Nerf, and at the train station, he and Misato finally get to communicate with one another. Asuka is not there, and neither send her regards. She must be really angry for Shinji's decision. Remember, all that Asuka wanted for Shinji is to behave like a man, and she never got that. In this shot, both Shinji and Misato are way too separated, as far as the screen allows it, and Misato tries to be harsh on Shinji to make him wake up. She knows she screwed everything up and has no excuses, and tells him that he is cutting ties and by doing so he will have a tough life ahead. Misato knows Shinji is aware that his coldness towards her hurts her, and he is doing it willingly. As a way to cope, she tries to respond the same way, with the same coldness. This is the hedgehog dilemma again. Shinji prefers to be alone than to be with someone that could hurt him again. Shinji tells her that that is her philosophy, and he cannot be like her. Shinji at this point only wants one answer from Misato, why Toji was chosen. And Misato responds honestly, and tells him the truth. All of his classmates are potential candidates. Misato understands that Shinji will be gone, and tries once again to convince him to stay, telling him that she put all her hopes on him, and how that was unfair, a mistake. Shinji sees this as another manipulation, and simply tells her not to waste her time. Misato finally gives up and lets him go. She knows he's making his own decision now. She realizes that he is behaving like a grown-up, and understands his motives. Who can blame him? Finally, she got what she was working on by protecting him. The results, however, were unexpected, as he left her alone. Shinji is waiting for the train to come, but suddenly, Tokyo 3 sounds the alarm. An angel is approaching. Serel, the arm of God. One of the most powerful angels in the story makes his entrance. His presence turns everything dark. Serral is big, cruel, and violent. He targets humans directly. Overall, he is raw force, and will try to push his way all the way into the Geo front. But that, my friends, is for the next video, in which we will pick up from here, as we are getting to the climax of the story. Guys. Thank you all so much for watching, remember to like the video if you did, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, join my discord, the link is in the description section down below, and as always I wish you all a wonderful day.